All right, so in this tutorial, uh, we're going to go over a, another example of a cool project you could do with your kids. Um, I think this could work for middle or upper school, probably even could work for lower elementary school as well, maybe like fourth, fifth grade. Um, it's not that hard to, to get started and it allows the kids to be kind of creative and put their own spin on it. So it kind of gives them the idea and a way to solve the problem, but it still lets them put um, their unique spin on it. And it's called uh, the Haven Labs Challenge. And I'm going to get out of Fusion real quick and I'm going to go back into the internet. And I am at Thingiverse right now, but this is the website for Haven Labs. It's a nonprofit. Um, they haven't been too active lately. In fact, the last time they posted anything on their blog was from January of 2017. Uh, we were in contact with them last year around the fall. Um, because it's a pretty cool idea. They have this, what they call their utility band. And this part in white that you're looking at is printed with flexible filament. And then they have this idea of a harder piece, this dark gray, where they've glued different attachments onto it. And as you can see, the example here is a fork holder. Um, this isn't for somebody with, um, a hand that functions properly. Um, this is just being, you know, modeled on a on a person who, who may or may not have a disability but you can think about this as a cheap assistive device or prosthetic um, depending on the issue you might have or a, a user might have with their hand so it's a really cool project to get the kids thinking about what other attachments they could make that could help someone in their everyday lives um, use both of their hands so it's cool to start with the one that they recommend. Um, anything you see in like this peach color, at least that's what I see with my eyes, is printed in flexible plastic. It's one way it grips the fork. And then this other gray color is printed in hard plastic, usually PLA. So if you go to Thingiverse, you can actually download both of those files. You can download all of them, actually. They have a uh, kind of like a marker crayon holder. They have a fork or utensil holder. They have that hard um, slider they refer to it as, and then they have this flexible base. So I'm going to go ahead and download the solid slider and the flexible base. Um, I could, if I wanted to, go right into my slicer. If you remember, we use uh, Simplify 3D. We highly recommend this slicer. Um, it has a bunch of different printers that you can um, control it with, but it also allows you to kind of really dive into the settings if you want to. It's a really cool slicer and it's worth definitely paying the uh, extra 160 bucks for a two seat license. Um, I'm going to import those. Just downloaded them so they're going to be right at the top of my list. And I'm going to move them around a little bit just so you can take a look at them. Um, methods to do this have been covered in other tutorials. Um, so if you want to check those out, you know, ways to use Simplify 3D to get a good print. Uh, so in this case, I just have both pieces. The only reason this is yellow is it's highlighted. If I click on the other one, that'll be yellow as well. I might print these in hard plastic at first just to see how they fit. Um, but this definitely, this piece right now that I've highlighted is meant to be printed in flexible plastic. Uh, we definitely have a tutorial on the website about best practices for printing with those flexible plastics. Uh, they have a a lot of people just call them Ninja Flex. It's like calling a, a tissue a Kleenex. That's a brand. Um, there's a wide variety of flexible plastics out there. Um, you do not necessarily need to use Ninja Flex. Um, and we can get into those best settings in another video. But my goal is to highlight this, the solid slider. So you could print this up and you never have to mess with this again. You could have your students just design whatever the attachments are and then glue it to this. But anytime there's more moving parts, that's when a failure is going to take place. So I actually like to have the kids design this shape into the pieces that they are making. Um, and you might think, like, how are you going to do that? Well, one way is you could print one up and then you could hand it to the kids with some calibers and other measuring tools kind of have them reverse design it they could come up with drawings for it and they could attempt to model it to scale now they'd get pretty close but to figure out what these measurements are on these rounded edges these fillets uh, i have no idea how to do that uh -huh. so we actually contacted haven labs and asked for them to put on their technical drawings as well 
So if you go to some of these other pictures in Thingiverse, you have their technical drawings, which is a really cool uh, skill to have to be able to look at a drawing like this and design something in 3D. So I've already downloaded that, and there it is. So you see a bunch of different views. You have a top view, a front view, a side view, and this kind of like little turned angled view in 3D. Um, this is definitely a, something I think the older students, uh, maybe middle, definitely high school, um, something you should teach them. Or I recommend that you should. Um, if they do go to engineering schools, they're going to have to produce these drawings and they're going to have to recreate um, based off of these drawings. If they're going to look into like patenting anything, um, they're going to have to have drawings like this. So it's a really cool skill to have and it kind of helps you with the piece. So I'm going to be uh, flipping back and forth to this drawing as I design my part. So now I'm going to jump back into Fusion. If you remember, this is our kind of like work plane. It's three-dimensional. I can change the view with this view cube, and it's pretty much infinite, infinitely big and infinitely small. Um, I can draw on any of these planes, and I can actually mess with those planes and, and put them where I want. It really doesn't matter where I start. I always like to start wherever I click, and today it's going to be the front plane. So I'm going to go back to my drawing. And you can approach this a couple of different ways. There's definitely more than one way to make this model. Um, and I've probably thought of like four or five different ways, and I really don't know which way is best. But I'm going to start with this circle right here. This circle is actually not part of the model. If you notice over here in the, the dark gray area in the bottom right, there is no circle. I'm going to use that circle as a reference to draw this portion of this solid slider right here, this Y portion. Um, it's just going to be easier for me to do that. So I'm going to start with a center circle. Right? I'm going to alt tab back to the picture and it's 1.27. The only thing I don't like about this is it's in inches. So my default is actually set to millimeters as you can see, but I can type in there inches and fusion is very smart and will change it for me. It'll automatically change it to millimeters. Now, you can either have that your kids do it this way. Maybe they're younger and you want to work on unit conversions. If it's like an integrated project, then you can change every one of these um, that are inches to millimeters. So that could be a cool feature. If not, you can always change the settings in uh, Fusion 360, or you can just type in inches and let it do that for you. Now, the reason I like this circle is I know that this Y right here, all of these pieces have to fit inside of that circle. So I'm actually going to draw lines. Even though this is three-dimensional, it's easier to start with rectangles. I want some reference lines. So I'm not done with this drawing yet. I'm going to go ahead and sketch out some lines from the center. I'm going to touch the circle. I'm really not worried about the angles yet because I'm going to use my sketch dimension tool to make sure that the distance between these two is 120 degrees. I'm going to make sure the distance between these two is 120 degrees. And by default, it's going to make the distance between these two 120 degrees. Now, Fusion is throwing an error at me saying that this dimension will over constrain the sketch. The way I translate that is that basically there's enough information already and you don't need to tell it that it's 120 degrees. It can't be anything but. Now, these lines, I'm actually not going to use ever. But they exist as lines that I can build off of. I can extrude these portions. They start to look like a Trivial Pursuit piece. Um, hope I'm not dating myself. Um, but I can go over here into my sketch palette to the right, this little menu that's pulled down. I can click on Construction. And when I touch these lines now, they should become dotted. I'm trying again. And they are not. Why would they not be done? And that is what I need them to do. Oh, there we go. Jeez. I click on the line first, then I'm going to hit construction. And these kind of things happen when you're doing it live on video for the first time. My apologies. So now you can see that they're all dotted lines, and now I can't 
really build anything off of off of these lines because they're there just for reference. Awesome. Now, what I what I really like about this though, when I hit stop sketch, is I now have this reference of that circle that starts to look like the Haven Labs. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new sketch and I'm gonna create it in the same exact spot. Um, I could have continued on with that sketch, but I wanted to start from scratch and get rid of all of that extra kind of junk that was there. I'm going to turn off my origin for now just so it gets out of the way. I'm going to go back and I'm going to look to see how wide those portions of the Y are. And if I zoom in, it looks like they're 0.16 inches wide. And that's this distance to this distance. And they're all symmetrical, so they're all 0.16 inches. Now... I could do this a couple of different ways. For me, the easiest way is with a two-point rectangle. Um, excuse me, a three-point rectangle. And I'm going to click once in the middle. I'm going to click once at the end, and I'm going to come up. And that distance, notice, is only on one side of that line. So it's not the right size. It's half of what I want. So I'm going to take my point one six inches, and I'm going to divide that by two. I'm hit enter. So the cool thing about fusion is you can type in mathematical expressions instead of measurements, and it'll do the math for you. Now I can do the same exact thing on the other side, or under sketch, I can mirror those portions I just made. And I can mirror them about my construction line, and I hit OK. And now I have one portion of that line, or excuse me, of that Y, that is correct. I'm going to go ahead and continue to do that. Um, I'm going to, instead of drawing it three times again, I'm going to come over to the circular pattern tool. This has been covered in some of the other tutorials available on our uh, channel. So if you want to check those out um, in a little bit more detail, go ahead. But again, I'm just kind of using these as applied to this Haven Labs project. Go ahead and hit circular pattern. And I get to pick everything I want to pattern. I don't need those center lines anymore, and I probably don't need these lines either, but I'm going to pattern them anyways. The type is full, which means we're going to go around a 360 degree circle, and then I need to select the center point. The default quantity is three, right? And that's really helpful because that's what I want, right? But if I wanted to, I could make that four, and notice that wouldn't be a Y anymore, it'd be an X. I can think about five, and it would start to look like you know, your little star there. But for now, I want it to be three, and those would all be evenly spaced out. I'm going to hit OK. Now, later on, I can go in and trim all these lines if I wanted to. In fact, I will with the trim tool. Anything that kind of overlaps and intersects is going to get in the way when I go to extrude some of this stuff. So there you have it. I trimmed everything out of the way, and I have this Y shape. And I'm going to escape to get out of the trim tool, and I'm going to look back at my drawing one more time. It looks like everything's good. My next step while I'm in this drawing is I'm going to turn this into a extruded solid, and it's going to look like this Y without the rectangular background. So I need to know how far to push that into a solid. And I get that distance right here on this si uh, front or side view. 0.37 inches. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit Stop Sketch. And now I'm going to have the opportunity to extrude this. And I'm going to use the extrude. It's under the Create menu. It is the default. I can always add stuff if I want to. Um, in this case, I'm not because I don't like to really clutter up these menus. I don't mind hitting the, the button for the drop down. But I'm going to extrude that Y. And I'm going to extrude it. I could push all I wanted and try to get that to be 0.37 inches, but I'm not going to calculate that in my head. Again, I'm going to put in 0.37 inches. Hit the enter button. That locks it in. So I have the beginnings of my Haven Labs slider. The next thing I'm going to do is make this square. I don't really like to round things off until the very end, so I need the dimensions of this square. And it is a square, it's not a rectangle, so I only need one dimension, this 1.69. Not 1.7, 1.69. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch. It doesn't really matter where, which side. Is it this side or is it the other side? They're equal right now. But I want to be drawing so I'm on top of this solid. 
And the best case here is going to be a center rectangle since I know where my center point is. And I'm going to come down and I already have it highlighted in blue. I'm going to type in 1.69 inches. And then I'm going to tab over to the other measurement and I'm going to type in 1.69 inches. I'm going to hit enter. And there is the base of my rectangle. Now, some people might be thinking, hey, if I'm going to design a custom part, maybe I don't want it to be this size. And I agree 100% with you. I'm just following the directions from that technical drawing. And later on, if I want to, I can kind of cut some of that out if I feel it's kind of overkill. Uh, maybe I'll show you what I mean in a second here. And that's the cool thing about this parametric design. I can actually go back in time later and make those adjustments and not really have to worry about it. So I'm going to stop sketch. And now I have my square. I'm going to go back to the drawing. I'm wondering how thick to make this. And it looks like right here, this measurement tells me it's 0 0.09 inches thick. So there's not a lot of material extruded there. So I'm going to come back, I'm going to create. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to push it all I want because in the end, I'm going to type in 0 0.09 inches. And hit the end. Okay. Oh, excuse me. There you go. So now I pretty much have the design the exact same way it is in my drawing, except for the rounded edges. Um, we can kind of see them here a little bit, and we can see what some of these dimensions are. And that's what some of these radiuses are. That's what this R stands for. So there's a radius of this top portion that is 0 0.05, a radius of this portion right here, which is 0 0.08. And there's even a radius right here that rounds off that. And you have 0 0.01 and this weird 0 0.03 by 45 degrees. It's the only thing about this drawing that is kind of puzzling to me. I've never seen somebody show a fillet with a degree. So we're going to go ahead and take a guess there. Um, remember, this doesn't have to be that perfect. I see this radius of 0 0.05. So I think that's what I'm going to run with. On the top, I'm going to make the radius 0.05. Um, on the bottom edges, I'm also going to make it 0.05. And to tell you the truth, I'm probably just going to stick with 0.05 for everything because there's not going to be that much difference of 0 0.08, 0 0.05, and this 0.03. It's also going to make my design a little bit easier. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to undergo mod or go into modify. Excuse me, fill it. Remember, we're filling a three-dimensional object, and that's the fill it under modify. We've talked about in previous videos the fillet under a two-dimensional drawing, but that would be for the sketches. So I'm going to go under and I'm going to click fillet. Now I could pick all of these sides, but just to kind of show you the difference, I'm going to pick the tops, then I'm going to pick these bottom portions first. Sometimes when you click too many, you kind of get lost of what you were picking. I'm even going to click these angles as well, or these lines, excuse me. All right, looks like I got most of them. I can always go back and do more. I'm going to type in 0.05 space inches. Whoa. Yeah, all right, cool. And it seems that I've made a mistake, and I know I love it when this kind of stuff happens because that doesn't quite fit. That kind of looks ridiculous, does it not? There's no way this would print up. It would print up in two separate pieces. I'm going to go ahead and hit the cancel button. And when that kind of stuff happens, if the student ever comes up to you and says, oh, wait a minute, what's going on here? Whenever bodies aren't attached, that fillet occurs. If you want the fillet to happen the right way, I'm willing to bet ah, I do. I have two bodies. And I know that because I clicked up over underneath my browser, and I see I have body one, and I have body two. So I made a mistake when I did this last extrude. The cool thing is I can go back and edit it. When I edit that feature, down here under operation, it says a new body. Yep, that's not what I want. I want to join it to the body that already existed. And when I hit OK, what you're going to notice up under my browser is that there's just one body. Now when I go back, and modify and click do my fillets. Mm -hmm. You see what I see as well. Not bad in a thousand today.
I'm going to edit that extrusion again. This time I'm going to pick the bottom as well. <laughs> now I have a full flat base. All right, now to the fillets. I'm not a big editor, so I'm going to leave all that in because that's stuff that really happens as you're modeling. Nobody's perfect. Kids are going to make mistakes. Um, you are going to make mistakes. It's cool to just be able to go back. On a two second delay here, I'm sorry. And click on the right ones. So we'll start on all these top lines. We'll move to these lines that touch the base. And the lines that are in between that join each part of these lines. And I can try to push and pull. As you can see, it starts to throw an error at you every once in a while. Or I can go over here and I can type in 0 0.05 space inches. And I can hit the enter button. Enter button. As you can see, I have rounded off all of these portions. Why is this rounding off important? I talked about it in prior videos, but again, it's worth a mention. Those edges, when they print, are super sharp. Right? I know it's just plastic, but they can be really sharp and they definitely can cut. The other thing to consider is how this prints layer by layer. If the fillets weren't there, when it got from the solid base and started printing these kind of like vertical Y pieces, that would be a 90 degree angle. And that's where prints are really uh, vulnerable to break. Um, just the way the printer lays plastic down, it's a place where it can snap easily. Once you introduce these fillets though and it rounds off, there's more plastic that's laid down, it becomes much stronger. So we have our rounded edges. I could definitely stop there if I wanted to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and round off these edges as well, though, with another fill. That edge, that edge, that edge, that edge. Swing back over. Now, if I type in the 0.05, it might throw an error. It might not, that it's too much of a filling. Oh, no, it works fine. I hit enter. If it did, you can just decrease the number until you get a fill that it works. So I have my edges all filleted, and I have not filleted these. Some of you might not have noticed. Um, I could. If I wanted to just print this piece up, I definitely could. And for this part of the video, I think I will. Cool thing about Fusion is it lets you kind of see parts you can't see. So as long as I get the mouse close, even though I can't see that portion, I can select. I like to rotate around and make sure I have everything. It seems kind of drastic. Let's keep it to 0.05 inches. Why not? Oh, might be too much. Yeah, there it is. Too much of the fillet. Anytime this happens, what I like to do is like push and pull a little bit. It's not going to let me. Yes, I know I can fill it something. There's a millimeter. In this case, I don't mind going back to the metric because at least it's a measurement that I can pick that works. So there's my piece. Again, if I wanted to download this and print it and use it with the other piece that I printed in with flexible filament, I'm going to make. I can hit 3D print. I always want to check the preview mesh and I want to make sure this send to the 3D print utility is not checked. I select the portion I want to print and if it comes back all triangles like it does, what do I mean by triangles? If we zoom in we can see it's broken up into triangles. I hit OK. Utility band slider V1 sounds awesome. Go back into 
and I'll leave this one up to see how close I am. Import. Go ahead and turn it over. I'm going to see that. You know, I'm pretty stinking close. Oh, I didn't round off the other edges. Awesome. So this is a cool way to do this. You can actually put it in here and try to see if it fits in if you can round off the edges. But I'll tell you what, I'm pretty stinking close. I'm happy with that. I actually think bigger is better in this case um, because that bottom portion is made out of the flexible plastic. And this bigger Y can push into that a little bit more and grab onto it a little tighter. Okay. I think if I were to make my fillets a little bit bigger, I would be a little bit better. This looks like it's a little bit more rounded off than mine. But that should work. And that is going to be the end of part one. Thank you.